Aloha, everyone. Thank you for joining me on Think Tech Hawaii. I am Shonda Park, your host for Money Talks. My guest on our last show was Rianne Ishevez, and we spoke about health-related financial hardships, specifically terminal illness in children. Today, Rianne is back to talk about long-term care and health-related financial hardships. She is going to share her knowledge on this topic that a lot of people, you know, have been affected by it either personally or has known someone that has needed some type of long-term care in their family. And so just like the last show, a very unpopular topic. However, it's information that is greatly needed. So Rianne, thank you for being back on the show today. Hi, Shonda. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. So the things that people need to talk about is not very popular. However, we see what families, many, many families are still going through. So will you please share what is long-term care and who needs it? Yeah, so long-term care is a very interesting topic, right? So before we get started, actually, um, you know, so this is what we'll talk about today, right? On the screen, you can see um, some of what we'll talk about is what is it, right? I think there's a lot of misconceptions around what is long-term care, um, who needs it, right? And what is the cost and ultimately who will pay for it, right? So these are the things that we want to cover today. So that's that's a whole lot we're going to be talking about today. But before I get started, Shonda, um, you know, one of the things that um, is really shocking is... Um, uh, the reasons why people file for bankruptcy. So have you ever thought about, um, you know, the number one reason why people file for bankruptcy? No, I have not given that thought. So it, it's quite interesting because when you think about bankruptcy, in your mind, right, we kind of think about mismanaged um, finances, you know, it kind of has like a negative um you know, you kind of think negatively sometimes when you think about bankruptcy. However, as you'll see on the screen very shortly, the number one reason why people actually file for personal bankruptcy is due to medical related costs, right? So, you know, studies show that 66.5% of all personal bankruptcies is due to medical expenses and healthcare related costs. So that's a huge deal, you know? So it's uh, unfortunate because <clears throat> it's, Something I think is one of the most challenging things to plan for is health care, right? Because we don't know, uh, we may not know the extent of how much it will cost us because we don't know, again, um, the extent of our care and for how long. And so that's why you can see that it can put a major strain on people's finances. And therefore, we see now um, the number one reason for people filing bankruptcy due to these medical costs. 66 percent that's a very high percentage yeah it's pretty significant so can you imagine you know the stress that it puts on the family and we briefly touched up on that you know um how it can affect every single member of the family and um I, on your other show we talked about the children and now we're going to talk a little bit more about the adults right and some of the health care challenges that we may run into okay so explain what is long-term care so what is long-term care, right? So um, actually, so before I start explaining what is long-term care, Shonda, can I ask you how you started your day today? Like, what was the first thing you did when you woke up in the morning? Jumped out of bed. You jumped out of bed. Okay, so you jumped out of bed. And then what did you do next? I went to use the bathroom. <laughs> okay, so you went to use the bathroom. Um, and then oh, what did you do? <laughs> Brush your teeth. Okay, very good. <laughs> Shower. <laughs> Shower. And then uh, get, got dressed, got ready, put on makeup, did my hair, got dressed, and drove to the office. Did you have breakfast? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Actually, I know you're not a breakfast person, but <laughs> typically most people do, right? So, yeah. uh, and w with everything that you did, did you even give it a second thought about your day? Like what, immediately when you woke up and jumped out of bed, did you even have to think about it? Didn't have to think about a thing. It's just, it's habit. It's habit, right? And it's yeah. just something that we do routinely every single day. Mm -hmm. So now, okay. so now what I'm going to ask you to do again is, 
um, you know, reverse, right? Think of, again about the start of your day, you're in bed. And now imagine not being able to do any of the things that you just said you did. I can't even imagine that. Yeah, so, and yet you, know, I know, you know, so many people go through it. So that, you know, in a nutshell is what long-term care is. So imagine if, you know, you woke up, however, you, now, instead of being able to jump right out of bed, like we normally do and don't even think about, imagine now needing help to get out of bed, right? Imagine now needing help to use, you know, basic things like use the bathroom, take a shower, you know, um, have breakfast, right? So um, on the screen, you'll see it lists what we call the six um, activities of daily living. So again, these are the things that you nor we normally do, right, on a daily basis. So it's the person, long-term care is a personal and medical care needed if you become disabled due to age or adverse health conditions, right? So if you can't perform some of the following on your own, you may need long-term care, right? So um, again, transferring, bathing, continence, um, there's feeding, right? So those are the basic things, um, activities of daily living uh, that we do again on a daily basis without even thought now we need some form of assistance right so you can kind of see how this um subject can be so um challenging right because again some people uh, it, so in order to qualify for long-term care you actually only need to assistance with two out of the six not all of them and um again it says it's related to old age or adverse health condition, right? So um, the, it can happen pretty much any time. At what age is a person eligible to, um, to be able to put long, a long-term care plan in place for themselves? That's actually a really great question because, you know, um, a lot of times, so first let me show you the statistics, right? So on this screen, you're gonna see that 70% of adults who live to age 65 develop a severe long-term care need, right? So I think a lot of times when we talk about long-term care, we think uh, immediately about seniors, right? We think about, okay, so um, the big question is, okay, we, we understand long-term, uh, we have an idea of what long-term care now is now, but when we think about, okay, who are, who is the, the age or the demographics that will actually need that kind of support, we always think about adults. And it's true, you can see it on the screen, right? It says 70% of adults who live to age 65. So typically, as we age, we're more at risk, uh, a health risk. Uh, we, you know, we're, we tend to be more sick. Uh, we tend to be more accident prone. And therefore, uh, as we age, you know, we see that that's the highest risk of needing long-term care. However, if you see the second half of the screen, right, you can see that 48% of adults, right, 18 and older receive some sort of long-term care benefit in their lifetime. Okay, so it's not just age related, really, it can happen at any time. So one of the things that always comes to mind when we talk about this topic of long term care is um, Superman. So do you remember the original Superman? I do remember he fell off, off um, fell off a horse and became a paraplegic, right? Yeah, so Mr. Christopher Reeves, right? Um, he was known for um, Superman. And he actually, so that horse accident um, happened at age 42. So at, you know, the prime time of his career, doing really well, he loved to ride horses. I think he was on um, some kind of uh, riding for a competition at that time. And, you know, he just, he basically, he was thrown off of his horse and then landed on his head. And I think I read somewhere that just um, a centimeter to just what a centimeter off he would have been able to walk you know so it's just a very unfortunate accident but every time i think about long-term care um happening to really anybody i'm always reminded of christopher reeves because um as we know that accident caused him to be paralyzed from the neck down right so yes. um and he was very young, only 42 years old. So we can see that, you know, um, un unfortunate accidents um, like 
horse from horse riding, car accidents, even accidents at work, really any um any disability, right? Whatever the cause is, health related or an accident, can put us in a situation where now um, we're needing some assistance with the things that we do on a normal uh, on a daily basis. I don't know if you have these answers, but just off chance, did you know if Christopher Reeves had long term care or if they needed to deplete all of his assets in order to uh, to pay for his health related costs? That's actually a great question. I I have not read his book. However, I I uh, heard that he wrote a book about you know his, his story and what happened and and the type of care that he needed. And one of the things that I remember reading online was that he mentioned that he was very fortunate to have a mass. Uh, wealth due to his career as a movie star, he was able to amass a certain amount of wealth and um, that afforded him the care that he needed because it, he actually um, talked about how he needed, you know, um, medical uh, equipment that insurance companies wouldn't cover or certain types of treatments that the insurance companies wouldn't cover. And so he talked about how you know, he was very fortunate to be in a position to afford these things um, and therefore, you know, be able to live another 10 years. Right. So, you know, and I think that's why he became such a huge, huge adv advocate for, you know, studying um, and, uh, per, uh, you know, his condition. And being able to be a resource, he started a foundation to be able to support people who financially couldn't afford what he could afford for his care. So um, I don't know if he had long-term care insurance, but I do know that he had enough, um, you know, built up enough wealth to be able to take care of himself and have, you know, care pretty much around the clock, right? So he had, um, his, his wife um, did not care, like, she cared for him, but they had nurses pretty much around the clock, right? So he could afford for that type of care. Yes, um, but his situation, of course, we all know is different. And for mostly the general population, they are not in that, you know, position where he shared that he was very fortunate. So, um, you know, looking at your other slide too, 48% of 18 and older that is almost half. And so again, with people thinking that you only need it after age 65, um, you know, we can see the statistics that 48% is 18 and older. Yes. Uh, and that's a huge point to make, right? Because we never know. And again, that's why planning for healthcare is one of the, I think, the biggest challenges that we have. We have because for one, we don't know exactly how much it's going to cost. And too, sometimes we don't even think about it. Again, when we think about health, we always kind of default to, okay, well, that's a, something I need to think about as I age or get older, right? And, yeah. and sometimes we may not know or understand the severity of, you know, the, the, the care and support that's needed until we ourselves experience a situation like that, right? And I think, um, especially certain cultures or in Hawaii, right? We want to take care of our um, families, our loved ones, our kupuna. And so we tend to actually carry the burden for, you know, taking care of the family members, right? Because a lot of times we don't really have a choice when it comes to care. Yes. Because like you said, we're not, you know, most of us are not in a financial position like Christopher Reeves to be able to have multiple nurses and care around the clock and equipment to help him, you know, um, still be able to thrive. And so many times long-term care, not only does it fall on the individual that ex is experiencing it, but really it's a challenge that uh, affects the entire family. Yeah, I agree. And I have a really good friend that unfortunately just lost her mom uh, fairly recent. And her mom ended up needing long-term care, did not have um, any long-term care solutions in place for her. So what happened was um, my friend's dad, so her parents were divorced. 
but her mom needed to move in with her ex-husband because there was no other space for them to take care of her. And so my friend would have to go, you know, to her dad's place and take care of her mom. And so it was very stressful. I, I could see how taxing it was on her and her kids and her, her whole entire family, even her dad, you know, being that they weren't even married for years. And here his ex-wife is in his home and the family is having to care for her there. And I, I again, I just seen how stressful it was physically, emotionally, mentally, financially. And so I had asked my my good friend after her mom had passed, do you have a long-term care plan in place? Because you've already experienced, um, you know, what happened with your mom needing long-term care, not having it and the burden that it put on the family. Now you have three kids, you don't want to repeat that. So, you know, I, I, I spoke to her about long-term care, be, again, being what she experienced with her mom. Yes. And, you know, you, it's, it's unfortunate. And a lot of times we think that it's the only solution because, you know, when we actually look at the cost, right, because I think that's a big question. I think a lot of times, you know, um, first of all, of course, we do want to provide care for our loved ones, right? We want to care for them. Um, and many times we make a financial choice, uh, be, or, or it, we make that choice because of finances, right? So when we look at the actual cost of long-term care, you know, it can range so widely, right? So we see anywhere from 17000 a year all the way up to almost 100000 year that's pretty significant right so um and again keep in mind right these numbers are actually national numbers and so you know as we know in hawaii it can be very expensive here right so um some of the services can range from um having some similar costs or significantly more you know right before um our you know, show today, Shonda, I looked at Genworth long-term care. So you can look this up, right? Genworth um, cost of care for long-term care. It shows you the national costs and mm -hmm. it also, uh, it also shows you um, a comparison of the different states, right? And in Hawaii for a private um, nursing, private room in a nursing home, you're looking at double the cost of that. Wow. So 180000 Okay, so that is very, very significant. Um, and so when we see that, right, that those those numbers are very shocking. I mean, um, most people in Hawaii, well, I don't know what the percentage, but, you know, do people even make 180000 a year? And then when they're not even able to make any more income, they have to spend 180000 a year for their long-term care. Yes, because now we're only talking about long-term care services, right? So if you can see, right, adult daycare center, which is the lowest cost, 17000 a year, it's because if we think about it, you know, it's only for a few hours. That means that for a few hours a day, you know, we're, um, we're able to get care at uh, an adult day center. However, we still have to provide care at home. Right. And or some people choose to get to receive care at home. And so they have a homemaker or home health aid, because, again, it's the things that we do on a daily basis. Right. That's why um, depending on the type of assistance we need and how much assistance we need, you know, we could end up paying anywhere from 17,000 a year to 92,000 a year. And unfortunately, without having a plan in place, it ends up being the child's the, their children's job, right, to take care of them. And I had, um, being a retired periodontal hygienist, I had a patient and she was sitting in my chair. She had a, you know, a diaper on and just very, very sharp still, you know, um, mentally very sharp, right? Just, you know, her body was not functioning as it used to. And she said, I, I have to use a bathroom. You know, I, I think I pooped my pants. And she stood up and she walked and it actually, you know, fell out of her diaper. And so she went to the bathroom and just made a huge mess. And the the son was there in the waiting room 
and we had to give him gloves and you know disinfectants to clean up his mom clean up the bathroom and he was very frustrated angry he was scolding her and yelling at her and it was just very very sad to see you know on both ends because maybe beautiful memories that he had with his mom is now you know going to be replaced with all the caregiving that he had to do right and then that's going to be the lasting memories of his mom after she passes away and it's just very very unfortunate on both sides for for the parent and the child yes you know um it's unfortunate and like you said you know a lot of people don't like talking about this but we and that's the reason why we want to talk about it on this show, right? Because um, we need to have these conversations. In fact, this is something that we need to talk about as a family, because like what we talked about earlier, you know, it it not only affects the individual, but it actually affects the entire family. And exactly. I think, um, and especially when it comes to costs, I think a lot of times there's misconceptions on how it's paid out, right? So sometimes we don't even think about it because we think, okay, well, if it's health related, you know, our, our medical insurance is going to cover it. Um, they should have Medicare, you know, at that time, so they should cover. So those are, you know, some of the things that uh, there's a lot of misconception around who will pay for this cost, right? And so um, the families need to have a conversation about this while the, the the individuals are still of sound mind and can you know plan ahead of time the kind of care that they would want to receive because you know um i think one of the things that like you talked about right um it, people they don't um i think people want to keep their independence right and i think they want to um they lose a little bit of dignity maybe when they're in that position of needing care and so you know we want to um make this by talking about this i feel like uh, yes we may still have to experience the chap all the challenges that come with it but again um at least take out some of the burden of uh, the financial burdens of going through this and um and having options, I think that's so important because a lot of times, you know, when we have to take care of our loved ones, again, um, we have to either cut our hours, we have to leave work. Um, you know, if there are other siblings, they have to alternate. Sometimes some siblings don't live in the same state. There's just so many um, things other than the care itself that is involved. And so that's why it needs to, we need to start talking about it. Yes, I agree. So what are some of the solutions and how can people plan for this in, in terms of getting long-term care and building that strong financial foundation? Yeah, so the financial foundation, as you know, we always talk about this, right? This is really the core principle that we have uh, when it, we talk about people's finances. We always want to look at our financial foundation. And when we look at our financial foundation in terms of long-term care, we go back to proper protection, right? So um, when we have proper protection, we're, that means um, income replacement, that means um, health care. Right. So we want to make sure that we have a plan in place also to, to, to be able to um, pay for things such as long term care. And today there are actually so many different types of solutions uh, that you can put in place. You know, there's a traditional long term care plan. Uh, there are hybrid plans. You know, um, on the financial foundation, we saw that, of course, we also want to uh, work on um, building our uh, investment. Right. Uh, you could be you could be self insured like uh, or you know have enough wealth build up to be able to take care of your long term care needs right like Christopher Reeves um, so you know there's so many different uh, ways that we can pay for this without having to you know burden or, or put you know additional financial burden on our family members and so and on the other end right if family members are prepared they have 
uh, emergency funds to be able to take off of work, right? They also have their, they've also built up enough wealth to be able to uh, take care of themselves during this time of need where they can be there for their family. That's also important too, right? So um, again, like we, what we talked about, the financial house is really uh, identifying, you know, how can we build our, our house strong? Um, because if you think about it, even within our own homes, right? We don't we don't really know how strong our house is until something happens, right? Like um, a Very natural true. disaster. Mm -hmm. Same thing with our finances. We don't necessarily know how strong our financial house is until something happens, such as you know needing long term care services. And so you know um, I do encourage people to again have these conversations with your loved ones, um, understand what it is understand you know your what you have in place and know that you know because it's uh it may even though what causes you to need services is health related the services that you need is not healthcare services that's why insurance doesn't cover it uh, health insurance doesn't cover it so we need another plan in place to be able to pay for care that can support us through you know um this time Thank you, Rayanne, for sharing all your knowledge on this subject matter of long-term care. I know it's a very heavy topic. There is so much information. I know that you do teach workshops uh, on this. So if anyone wants more information, you can contact Rayanne directly. She actually teaches about long-term care and many other financial concepts. So thank you for sharing about how people can put a plan in place, have long-term care, lessen the burden on themselves, on their families, on their um, financial house. So uh, Long-Term Care Awareness Month is in November. We can expand on that. So see you all next month. Thank you. Thank you, Shonda. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.